And actually, Positive skewness. Um, is that correct? Yeah, negative skewness. And then no skewness. And then. No skewness with the bell. Right. Normal. But actually, it's only bell shaped if it has no skewness and no protosis. Uh. Mm. Negative protosis, bell-shaped, normal, and positive protosis, which is really difficult. It's kind of difficult for me to draw, but do some bars like that. You see how the normal curve is halfway between? It's halfway between the positive and negative skewness, and it's halfway between the negative and positive protosis. So um, actually the normal has neither of each. Normal. Um, the normal distribution, okay. the bell-shaped curve. Perfectly normal distribution. Yeah. Right, it doesn't do the same thing. And um, a normal distribution is really just when you don't have any skewness and don't have any kurtosis. I was going to collect some, some data from the class. I was going to ask everyone, how many miles do you live away from campus? Eight, eight miles. 
So let's try to make a histogram. We, we, our lowest one is 3, and our highest one is 20. So maybe we'll make bins of 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 15, 15 to 19, and then 20 plus out here. This one would actually be 20 to 24. We're going to try to see what type of shape we have. There's two in here. Is between five and nine. Two tens. And then twenty is way out here. So it's hard to really see what type of shape we have. It's probably more of a negative kurtosis because it's too it's too flat to really be normal. see how real life data doesn't really come out to those really nice looking shapes that I made on the board or on, in PowerPoint, that they're kind of more rough looking. But this actually is probably more of a negative kurtosis. And there's one way to find out. shape, which means skewness and kurtosis values. If it comes out to zero, no skewness. So this means no skewness at all, no kurtosis at all. And there's also some cutoffs where a skewness between negative one and plus one Skewness between negative one and plus one is roughly no skewness, meaning it's close enough, it's pretty close to no skewness. Same thing with kurtosis. A kurtosis between negative one and plus one is roughly no kurtosis. It's pretty much just like this.
Wait, not more positive, more negative skewness mm. when you get further below zero. Maybe I should, I'll be consistent. Put this under here. So that we know it's getting pushed in. Well, I'll, this is just saying that this has to do with the values. Oh. It's saying when you get a kurtosis value further below zero, it's more of a negative kurtosis. I said anything between negative one and plus one. See this area right here? So really, instead of judging the shape with a graph, you can also calculate a value that tells you what type of shape you have. And if your skewness value comes out between negative one and plus one, it means you roughly um, have roughly no skewness, which means your, your peak is pretty close to center. When the peak of your graph, when the peak of your histogram becomes more like this, Neg see how it's a negative skewness? You move more toward negative skewness values. So this would, would have a pretty negative number for skewness. When you move toward positive skewness values, you get more of this. So a, a, a data set like this would have more of a positive number. When you get to a really negative kurtosis value, you get some, up here you'll get something really flat like that. And then somewhere closer to zero, you'll have something that's more kind of flat like this. In the middle, you'll have normal, like that, zero. And up here, you'll have something really positive, like, like this. So you see how we're moving from really flat down here to really positive up here? We're really, being really negative kurtosis to really positive. And then what would have a skewness value of zero? The bell shape. So a perfectly normal distribution has a skewness value and kurtosis value of zero.
if both values are between minus one and plus one, the data is considered close to normal, meaning if both of these are in, are in the range in the center, then it's pretty normal. The data is close to normal. So I wanted to take our data right there and actually see what the values come out to. Yet, when I was thinking of an, an analogy for this, you know how a person who has a, a blood pressure of 120 over 80 is considered to have perfect blood pressure? But then someone who's in a certain area still has pr blood pressure that's fairly normal, and it's, at a certain point you're considered to have low blood pressure at a cutoff, and, it, and at a cutoff up here you're considered to have high blood pressure. It's the same idea. It's, so something in here is kind of a negative skewness. It's just not enough to be diagnosed as a negative skewness, I guess. It's still pretty close to normal. So let me enter that data that we have. I'll do it way over here. Four, three, ten, ten, twenty, and eight. Our statistics, we can go back to our statistical formulas up here. And we have skew is skewness. We'll highlight the values. 1.19. So 1.19 for skewness is actually above plus 1. So we do actually have kind of a positive skewness. Our value came out up here. So it's about right there for skewness. And does it look that way? Well, it does, I guess it does kind of peak toward the left, and, and it is kind of pushed over to the left like this, so it is kind of a positive skewness. Kurtosis is K-U-R-T, Kurt. Kurtosis of 1.91. So it's actually more of a positive kurtosis, I guess. I kind of judged it wrong. Did I get the right values? So kurtosis, our kurtosis is actually up here in this range, where it's high enough to be a positive kurtosis. <coughs> it's above the plus one cutoff. So we have a positive and negative, no, I mean a positive skewness and positive kurtosis in our data. So how would you word it? it you would say it's positive, it's bell shape, positively skewed, and positively kurtosis? Um, it's, um, it's posit it has a positive kurtosis and a positive skewness, mm -hmm. and it's not bell-shaped. Because okay. bell-shaped is a skewness of zero, zero. and a kurtosis of zero. Okay. Remember, bell-shaped bell -shaped is when you have no skewness and no you kurtosis. No okay. So, Having a positive or negative skewness 
means not bell-shaped, and having a positive or negative protosis means not bell-shaped, because bell-shaped is zero. Oh. Hmm. See, like right here, I put, it, for both of them, I put a bell curve at zero. Mm -hmm. And we're actually, for both of them, we're up here, and we're up here. So we're actually above the bell curve at positive end for skewness and kurtosis. So skewness and kurtosis are both different ways that a curve is not normal. So in here, Correlations. Has anyone heard of positive and negative correlation? Mm. So, a correlation is just a relation, it's a relationship between two quantitative variables meaning like age and income, or um, height and shoe size. And it's, it's a relationship where a person's value on one thing is predictable based on a person's value on the other thing. So if you think about uh, the amount of money that people spend on gas per week and how, how far they drive to work, so commute distance is one variable and amount spent on gas is the other one. If someone tells you how many miles they drive to work each day, you could probably use that number to make a rough prediction about how much they're spending on gas. Because if the person tells you they drive a, a long way to work, you would think, oh, they must be spending a lot on gas, right? Or if they tell you I live right next to my job, you would think they're not spending much money on gas. The reason why you can make those predictions is because, because um, Commute, commute distance to work and um, announcement on gas are correlated. There's a correlation. Um, what about the number of units a person is taking per this quarter and how much free time they have per week? That's also something that's predictable. If a person tells you that they're taking 20 units, you would think they don't have very much free time. If someone tells you I'm, I'm taking two units, you think, oh, they probably do have a lot more free time. So it's predictable. But you see how the, my first example is different from my second one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the first one, it's where one thing goes up and the other thing goes up along with it. Positive. So it's a positive correlation. In the second one, it's something where when one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. So when um, when the number of units being, when a person takes more units, they tend to have less free time. It's a negative correlation because people who are higher on one thing tend to be lower on the other thing. So it's a positive, a negative correlation is more like this. When one thing goes up, the other one goes down. And positive means they go up together, like this. These are just the definitions that I just described. These are some possible positive correlations. Of the house. Um, yeah, pe taller people tend to have high, more shoe size or larger shoe sizes. People who go to school have more years in school usually make more money. Um, I already said how people who live longer from work tend to spend more money on gas. Maybe people who watch more baseball games on TV tend to go to more games in person if they're a, a fan. 
People who go to less games in person might watch fewer games on TV. People who have longer commutes to work might, might tend to spend less time sleeping. Because if you have a longer commute, you have to get up early, right? Mm. And you, you get less sleep a lot, a lot of the time. But this also depends on, on what time you go to bed. If it's really just, if you're willing to go to bed earlier, you can still get enough sleep. But if you refuse to go to bed earlier, then that's when this happens. When you're, if you don't want to go to bed early, then when your commute time goes up, your sleep time goes down. Credit card debt and credit score. When you have, when you have more debt, you tend to have a lower credit score. Also, when you, when you miss more payments, your credit score goes down. People who have missed more payments usually have lower credit scores. So you can make a scatter plot where each person or animal thing is a dot, is a dot that stands for their two values. But if this is our data set right here, commute, distance, and amount spent on gas. five people, right? my lowest 10. 10. Yeah. Maybe I'll go up by fives. So person number one is has a commute distance of five and they're spending ten dollars on gas per week. So that person's right here. See how commute distance of 5, it's lined up there, and amount spent on gas is 10 as long. It's lined up with 5 miles of commute and $10 of gas. You don't have to have these dotted lines, I'm just doing that to, to show how it lines up. What about person number 2 is 7 commute distance and Twelve dollars of gas. It's about right here. Seven and twelve. Does that look about right? Mm. Oh, I was just wondering if you had to have the same distance. You ended that at twenty-seven. 